Hey everyone, Cheryl from Rugged Pine here. Just pulling up to camp. I got some uh, maintenance to do today. So this is my entrance and I just want to show you tomorrow is the first day of whitetail hunting season with rifles in Saskatchewan. And uh, <laughs> looks like I got some company over here. Just a Got a few tracks going through here. I noticed uh, a few times ago when we came there was a uh, mule deer walking through here. When you don't stop and look around once in a while, you miss the obvious. And here are some little moose tracks. Even tinier moose prints. The other ones I just showed you took a sharp left turn into the bush. They're not where I'm walking right now, but these little guys. <laughs> it's amazing how far a rodent can jump compared to their body size. But I'm going to keep walking over to that hill on my left. When I get closer to going through the trees there, I'll take you with me and we'll see what we find at the top. These are some fair size, actually fair spread footprints, fair size too. Shows that there's some big deer walking in this area. <sighs> Another trail. Seeing lots of uh, day old prints. The odd fresh one or two, but not hours ago kind of a thing. Huh. If that's a deer with the double side by side split hoof, that's a freaking huge animal. Let's, see. Let's check out another one here. See, they have the two dots in front. Oh, maybe they have elk in this area. 
that would be, if they have elk walking through here, that would be about right. But elk go in herds. So that doesn't really make sense. Huh. Well, we'll have to check our family hunting guide and get his expert opinion and see what he thinks. He's a hell of a tracker, Uncle Lyle. Well, up the hill. It may seem weird, but yes, I step over animal tracks. I don't go tromping through them if I can help them. <laughs> I don't know if it's just a human thing or me being polite thing or what the deal is, but I step over hoof prints. Tells you who else has been in the neighborhood, including your footsteps. Oh, there's ice inside that one. That one's old. And these are all day olds. Nobody's been through here today. Okay, I'm on the top of the North Hill. This is looking west. It is 4.15ish in the afternoon. This is looking south. Actually, I'm going to go around this end of the tree line. And there's a hill on the other side. I'm going to climb that one and see what I get. You can see that trail right through the middle of the trees. That is me. A little bit of pawing going on over there. Another big spread in the hooves. Bigger animal. I've seen side by sides where you see the fair sized average ones with tiny little ones besides, so got some does and fawns running around. This is fresh. Going somewhere this morning, probably. I guess out here, it's my nice thing about Saskatchewan. Here, there's nowhere in this province that is bad view. You can stand anywhere. See the stars, see the sunset. See, that's what I love about this province. And no matter where you stand, you can see the night sky. Okay. Over there, okay. that's where I came through. And 
over there is hill number one. <laughs> I'm gonna head back, unload some firewood that I brought, and have supper. I made a white tail stew last night. Enjoy what's up to the sunshine. the flaps to the outside. This actually, uh, this um, burner has its own little piezo starter. So we're going to open it up. Oh, there we go. Had to open it further. I got my drinking water, I'll be right back. So this little uh, burner that I have, I got off Amazon. It was only like eight or nine dollars. Amazon.ca. Um, nice thing is it came with its own piezo ignition on it. I've used it a few times now, and the ignition doesn't seem to fail at all. But of course, I never go around anywhere without my lighter on me. So as long as I can open up the fuel source, I can light it. I'm going to start with making myself a coffee or a hot chocolate. When Stuart's out with me, I make coffee because that's what he drinks. So I'll transfer that to this and then I have my, soup, my stew. I'll throw that into the cup and heat it up and supper will be ready shortly. The reason I brought this igniter out this time was because it has a smaller uh, burn surface than the other one that I use. You've probably seen me in my other videos use a round one. I think it's got uh, three and a half or four inch burn radius on it where the flame is all on the outside, not the inside part. And that just spreads out the heat for bigger pots and pans. Well, I'm just using a small mug, so I gotta be careful I don't burn the stew or whatever I put directly in the center of the cup so I'll have to stir it as I go but for just boiling water it's it's nice to have that concentrated heat in the middle and that'll just heat it up a little faster hopefully use less fuel and it's lighter and takes up less room than the other one I'm only out here for a few hours today till we come back and do some work I'm just scouting out some locations. Yeah, look, the bottom is all bubbly at the bottom already, so it's getting close to boiling. I don't know, I hope you can see it. There's some steam coming up there. So this is working much faster than the, the big spread one. Then if I feel like dessert, I have a fruit cup and a chocolate bar, but I think I'm just going to go with my chocolate supreme tonight. 
I'm not in a, the French vanilla. I'm not a French vanilla fan, but I really actually like this one. And then I have hazelnut. And that's a little too fancy for me tonight. Just regular good old hot chocolate supreme. I'm using my titanium spork. Now be warned, if you use metal utensils in the winter, unless you warm it up first, your tongue will stick to it. I'm speaking from experience, so don't do what I do. Smells good. Sun's going down, so I better get my food going fast here. I always put a lid on my cup or my pot, whatever I'm trying to cook. Use my energy a lot more wisely. Keeps the heat in and boils faster. Oh wow, that's actually quite a bit. Yeah, turn to snow. That smells so good. Okay. Got some bun with a little bit of butter on it. That's nice. It's boiling already. Been about 60 seconds. So like I said, because the heat's concentrated on the bottom of your cup, you want to stir it around a little bit to make sure you don't burden whatever's sitting right in the middle there for content. Okay, 
it's lukewarm. We're going to give it another minute and that'll be good. So this recipe found in one of my uh, hunting cookbooks and it is uh, just a venison recipe. I'm sure you could do it with meat, uh, with uh, beef. And so it's really simple. You don't need too many ingredients. A can, uh, four cans of water or substituting out four cans of uh, beef liquid. So you're going to need that. So you start with your two pounds of whatever. In this case, I use white tail. You cut it into cubes, about one inch by one inch. And then you pat it dry with a paper towel, throw the paper towel out. Then you take salt and pepper, sprinkle it all over your meat, spread it liberally. And then you take a little bit of flour, just a sprinkle over top, and give it a light coating. So you're going to shake up your meat again with that light flour coating on it. And then you're going to set that aside. Now you need three tablespoons of butter and two medium-sized yellow onions. Well, I used yellow. I suppose you could use white or uh, Spanish or whatever suits your fancy there. Chop it up into little bits and throw that in a pan on medium heat. So you're going to soften up the onion but not make it soggy. Just soften it up a little bit. So for five minutes on medium heat. Uh, then you're going to take your meat, throw it on top of the onions, stir it in, give it another five minutes of cooking. So it's going to basically brown or braise the meat. And then you're going to take a stew pot, take that meat mixture off the heat, throw the stew pot on the heat, throw your frying pan contents into the stew pot. You're going to add two medium sized cubed tomatoes. You're going to add either the four cups of water, but what I did was I used the beef water, the beef juice, and I had one can of that, so I threw in three extra cans of the, uh, of the regular tap water, and you stir it up and maybe, once it comes to a boil, then you turn it down to simmer for another hour. So with the salt, the pepper, oh, garlic powder, I missed garlic powder. You have to throw in a teaspoon of garlic powder when you throw in your, your uh, beef juice and your tomatoes. So you've got your salt, your pepper, your garlic. The tartness of the tomatoes will also help to break down as it simmers the meat and it becomes out a really nice soft chewing material at the end. So it's really easy, it cooks up really good. I can write that out in the description of the video. But I see there's steam coming out the top, so it's probably time to eat already. Oh yeah, she's been boiling hard here. Now I have to let that cool down, so I might as well have a drink of my, po of my hot chocolate while it cools down. And of course, I didn't stir it while I was talking to you, so I burnt the bottom. But that's okay. That's okay. Just feels like a little bit, doesn't feel like a lot. So. so it's got a really nice old juice, so you can cook up any kind of potato. Oh, you're supposed to also throw in uh, two giant handfuls of diced mushroom, uh, sliced mushrooms. But I didn't have any mushrooms in the house, so I didn't throw that in. So you have your white tail, your tomato chunks, and your mushroom, and it thickens up into a really nice sauce. And you can pour that over your potatoes, or I have a bun with butter here, and that's going to be my supper here. And This is so good. This is a thousand times better than anything you'll get in one of those ration packs or those dehydrated meals from the store. When at all possible, I like to cook my own cat food ahead of time and bring it out. So much tastier. Another option is you could dice up some potatoes and throw them in probably 20 minutes before you're done um, simmering. If you put them in right at the beginning, they're going to turn to mush. But that would be another option, throw in another two giant 
or two medium potatoes in there as extra filler. Maybe a little bit of corn if you wanted. A little bit of chili peppers maybe. Then I'll be heading in, so that's it for tonight. Thanks for coming for a walk around with me, seeing out the other couple hills over there. I haven't been up those yet to see what I could see on the other side, just like the bear in that little children's rhyme. So enjoy, and we'll see you on the next walkabout. Thanks for watching.